Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Dinamane, Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine, Nirvishesha Shanyavani Pascha Chandisa Haraji. So I'm very glad to be back in St. Khan again and see that our programs are able to continue here. Many Sundays I had the opportunity to come here in the past and for some time of course this temple was undergoing some renovation and we can see some renovation has been done here. Anyway it's very nice that we can continue to have the meetings here. Certainly not everyone is able to go up into, into the city, into the Garanda Hall there and it's nice to have a program in this area makes it easier, more accessible for devotees. So today we're celebrating a special festival. Just as two weeks earlier, we celebrated Krishna Janmastami. And today, although it's not the actual day, it was actually on Friday, uh, but because we only meet once a week, we're celebrating today. So. The occasion is called Rad Astami. Right? Astami again. Just like Janmastami, Krishna appears on the eighth day. Srimati Radharani is 15 days younger than Krishna. So this is Rad Astami festival. The, the day in which Srimati Radharani appears in this world. When Krishna comes, he does not come alone. When the Lord comes, he has also all of his different devotees and associates, potencies, they also appear. Just like when the king comes, or of course in Singapore we don't have a king, but we have a, a leader, the state, head of state, the prime minister, when he will come, he won't come alone. He's going to come. Many officials. Some will come before and some will come with him. So similarly also when Lord Krishna comes, he comes also with his different friends and associates. Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, Vasudev Devaki. And then Balarama also comes as the seventh child, Vasudev Devaki. Lord Krishna comes as the eighth child. So Srimati Radharani, she comes as the child of Maharaj Vrishabhanu and Kirtida. And her place of residence is called Varsana. Maharaj Vrishabhanu, he's a king, he's a Maharaj. He has a palace and he has a wonderful palace if you go there to visit the holy place of Varsana, you'll see how it's, the palace is on like a mountain there. So it was at that place where Srimati Radharani uh, performed her childhood pastimes, her Leela, and she appears. Uh, the identity of Srimati Radharani should be understood carefully. First of all, her birth is not Maharaj Rishabhanu actually found her on top of a 1,000 petal lotus flower and brought her home. So, Srimati Radharani is actually the potency of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna has three main energies. There is the material energy, just like this world here in which we are in, the material world. So that's one of the energies of Lord Krishna. And then there's also the spiritual world. 
the spiritual create manifestation, which means like Vaikuntha, all the planets in the Vaikuntha. And then higher than Vaikuntha is Goloka. So this is all the spiritual realm. And then the living entities, all of us living, not only humans, but all different living entities, all different forms of life, that we are all the marginal potency of Lord Krishna. So three main energies. And this, this spiritual energy is described to have three different categories. One is called the Sandini potency, by which everything is maintained. The other is the Samvit potency, which is the knowledge potency. And then there's the Ladini potency, which means the pleasure potency. Krishna is a person. We want to remind everyone, in case we forget, that Krishna is a person, a transcendental person, and he likes to enjoy, just like all of us. We like pleasure. We're looking for pleasure. It's not wrong. It's natural to want to have pleasure. We want to enjoy. Where to find that enjoyment? You know, sometimes the children will say, take me here, I want to go there. <laughs> you know, we have our ideas where we're going to find pleasure. It's difficult to understand, really, where we should go to find pleasure. It's not wrong to want to have pleasure. It's natural, because it's the nature of the soul to be happy. And just as we are souls, Lord Krishna is the supreme soul, and he likes to enjoy. He likes to enjoy in an unlimited way. Mm -hmm. Right? Our enjoyment, we, we're not, we're, it's easier for us, you know. We're, we're not so demanding, little things please us. But for Lord Krishna, He's the Supreme Lord, Bhagavan. He has everything. How will He enjoy? How to please Him? how to give pleasure to him. There has to be something very, very special to give him pleasure. And that very, very special person who gives Lord Krishna pleasure is personified in the form of Srimati Radharani. Just as Lord Ramachandra comes he does not come alone, right? We see, we see Sita Ram, Sita Ram. Mother Sita is with Lord Ramachandra. And Lord Narayan, his consort is Lakshmi, Lakshmi Narayan, right? Hmm? And Lord Shiva also, he has Parvati with him. So the same way, Lord Krishna comes with Srimati Radharani. Initially, when people worship Krishna, they simply worship the form of Krishna. They didn't appreciate that Lord Krishna also has his consort. It was actually Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who taught the real understanding of Lord Krishna how Krishna comes with his potencies. So it is said, Radha and Krishna are actually one, but they separated themselves eternally as Radha and Krishna. We say Radha Krishna. Radha representing this Ladini Shakti, this pleasure energy of Lord Krishna. The perfect form, the perfect personality in the form of Srimati Radharani. Her purpose, her desire is to give pleasure to Krishna. And she does this 
in the most wonderful ways. She has very special qualities. Of course, we could say she is Krishna's own potency. And we say Krishna is Bhagavan. He is unlimited. He has all the wealth and all the beauty and all the strength and all the knowledge and all the fame as well as all the renunciation because he is Bhagavan. In the same way, Srimati Radharani is also unlimited in her qualities as appearing in the, in the, the female form as a gopi in the land of Vrindavan. Because Krishna, in his childhood, Krishna grows up in Vrindavan as a cowherd boy. And the cowherd, as a, the cowherd boy, he has some relationship with the cowherd girls. And the leader of all the cowherd girls is Srimati Radharani. Radharani's, and along with all the other gopis, they are all great devotees of Krishna. Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and everything expands from him. And we said Radha and Krishna are one but they've become two and similarly from Radharani there come so many other forms like Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune and Mother Sita and all of these other divine personalities. They're all expansions coming from the original form of Srimati Radharani. So Radharani is a, the root, the mula of all of these expansions of the energy of the Lord. And their only purpose is to give pleasure to Krishna how to please Krishna. And they please Krishna in various ways. Of course, one way in which, which is very well known is they have Rasa Lila. They dance together. Krishna, as a cowherd boy, he likes to play the flute. And when, sometimes when playing the flute, they will also dance. If you just dance alone, it's not much fun, is it? So Krishna has his companions to dance with. He calls all the gopis, and they all come in the forest of Vrindavan, and they dance with Krishna. They give the greatest pleasure to Krishna. Krishna comes into this world to show us something of the spiritual world because he knows that we're not really happy here in this world. We are trying to get pleasure here. We're looking for happiness here. But we're trying to find the pleasure in the material things, in the temporary things. And there's no real pleasure there. Very small, very temporary pleasure. It doesn't satisfy us. We want more pleasure. We're always trying to get more. We're never, we, we, you know, nobody ever said, now I have enough. Now I'm fully, you know? The businessman never says, now I've made enough money. Does it ever happen? Never. Yeah. I knew this one young man in Hong Kong. He made a million dollars very quickly one year. He said, I can't wait to make more. <laughs> you know, he didn't say, now I've got enough, I'm just going to retire, you know. He's thinking how to make more. In the same way, pleasure. We're always, we want to enjoy more, unlimitedly. But we cannot get that unlimited pleasure in the material world, in the objects of this material creation. If we want the real pleasure, we have to look to God. To Krishna. We have to, first of all, before we look to Krishna, we have to first of all discover our own self. We have to understand 
more about our own self, who we are, who am I. We have to understand ourselves as a, a spiritual being, as a spiritual particle of the Supreme Lord. And then when we want to approach the Supreme Lord, we approach, we don't approach him directly, but we should go through Rajarani. One way in which we can approach Krishna is by going through Rajarani. Srila Prabhupada explains to us, he says that Srimati Radharani is very kind and gentle young girl, village girl, seemingly village girl of Vrindavan. Of course, that's the highest place in the spiritual world. It's not like a village in the mundane sense, but on the spiritual platform. And she's very kind. And if we take shelter of her, if we are somehow able to engage in the service of Srimati Radharani, and if we can please her, then she can introduce us to Krishna. So this is why this Radhastami festival is very, very important. Because it's a day in which we appeal to Srimati Radharani that you kindly be merciful to me. Can you introduce me to Lord Krishna? Can you bring me to Krishna? If Srimati Radharani will accept us, then certainly Krishna will accept us because she is very dear to Krishna. Because she also has unlimited qualities to attract Krishna. It is said, Krishna is known as Madan Mohan, meaning he can conquer Cupid, Mad Madan, oh, Cupid, right? He is a control, we are all controlled by Cupid. Cupid fires his arrow into our heart, he gets us, you know, we're entangled, material world, no hope. You know, Cupid cap captures us. But Krishna, he conquers Cupid. But Radharani, Srimati Radharani, she is called Madan Mohan Mohini. That she attracts Krishna. Krishna conquers Cupid. But Radharani, she can conquer Krishna. She's so powerful. This is her Shakti, that she has the greatest uh, qualities, divine attributes, which are giving the greatest pleasure to Krishna. So we want to approach Radharani. And in fact, it is said that the this, this spiritual teachers, they have the mode also of being one of the servants of Srimati Radharani. So we approach Radharani through the spiritual teachers because the spiritual teachers, either they're a, an, an associate of Lord Nityananda who comes with Lord Chaitanya or they're a servant of, one of the servants of Srimati Radharani and her gopi. There are countless numbers of gopis, maid servants, all these cowherd ladies. There are countless number. But of the countless number, it is said 16,000 are very special. And of the 16,000 gopis who are very special, 108 are even more special. And of the 108 who are very special, eight are very, very, special. And of these eight gopis, there are two who are particularly. And from these two, there's one who is outstanding, who attracts Krishna more than all others. And that is Srimati Radharani. The very name Radharani actually does not come in the scripture. 
It doesn't, it's not mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, where we usually read about Rasa Leela and about the pastimes of the gopis. But there is reference to a gopi, a particular gopi. And although her name is not mentioned as Radharani, indirectly her name is mentioned by the word Aradhana. Aradhana meaning one who is very expert in the worship of Krishna. So this is Radharani's position, that she is very expert in the worship of Krishna. And her glories are understood by so many great saints and sages. And if you go to Vrindavan even today, you'll find the people of Vrindavan, how they they're regularly chanting her name, Radhe Radhe, they like to call because they want to get the mercy of Radharani. In our own society, we are chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, this Hare means also Radharani. There's no difference between the chanting of Hare Krishna and Radha. But the Vedic mantra is Hare Krishna. We're following the scriptures by chanting this Vedic mantra. But the reference is to Radha and Krishna. The devotee is chanting the names of the divine couple, Radha and Krishna. So Radharani, Srimati Radharani, as Srila Prabhupada would refer to her, she would perform very important services for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. It is said she had been given a blessing by a great yogi called Durvasamuni. Now Durvasamuni, you know, he's a yogi, he's the big Radharani cooked for him and he was so pleased that he blessed her that in future that whenever you cook whatever you it will be like nectar so Srimati Radharani had this blessing so every day when Lord Krishna would go off to the forest with the other cowherd boys taking the cows to graze in the forest Mother Yashoda would call Srimati Radharani to come to their home and she would come and prepare the foodstuffs for Lord Krishna. Even though Mother is there, Mother Yashoda, Mother Yashoda calls Srimati Radharani that you have the blessings of Darbasa. You come, you cook for my son. I want my son to get the best. I think you can do better than me. So you could just imagine how exalted Srimati Radharani must be, that if she can cook even better than Mother Yashoda. So she was coming and cooking for Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna would be relishing, of course, her cooking. But they were enjoying different dealings. You know, loving Lord Krishna likes to enjoy, just like if you read the Krishna book, which is a very wonderful book, where Prabhupada describes to us the whole Leela of Lord Krishna, not only in Vrindavan, but also Mathura and Dwarka. And you can hear how Lord Krishna sometimes would tease people. There's one interesting story there where Krishna teases Rukmini. Krishna was in Dwarka, and they were already grandparents. They had grandchildren. 
And one day Krishna began to tease Rukmini and tell her, you know I'm not really qualified to be your husband, you should have married somebody else. You know, I think you should go and you know, I think you made a mistake, you know, I'm only a cowherd boy, you're a king's daughter, I'm not really worthy for you. There were so many other kings who wanted you. And, like Krishna was teasing Rukmini. So Krishna enjoys these joking words. It, it is actually said that the pleasure in family life is the joking words between the husband and wife. So Krishna would also tease Radharani sometimes. And particularly when he knew that Radharani had been laboring all day to cook for him. He wants to, he wants to tease her a little bit. Because Srimati Radharani is very anxious to know if Krishna is enjoying his cooking. So she pre prepared a, a very special sweet for Krishna. And it took very long time, you know, to prepare. She's cooking on, you know, there's no gas, cooking on hot fire, probably using gober, the cow dung. <coughs> Cook slowly. You have to be very careful. You don't burn the milk and so on. So she was really working over these hot stoves the whole day, cooking these special death preparations. And this one sweet for Krishna, she took a lot of time and trouble to prepare. So she was anxiously watching. Lord Krishna came home that night and sat down, and the different dishes were brought. And Krishna saw this particular sweet, and he knew this is oh, this is my favorite, this has been prepared specially for me, that Srimati Radharani must be want, she must want to please me. And Krishna could see over at the door, Radharani was hiding behind the door, looking to see if Krishna would enjoy the sweet. So Krishna would take a tiny morsel of the sweet and put it on his tongue and then screw up his face. <laughs> And Radharani would be standing over to the doorway and she'd, oh, oh, you know, thinking, oh, maybe I put salt instead of sugar or something. You know? <laughs> maybe I, I must have done something wrong. I don't know why it's so bad. And Krishna took the sweet, put it on Madhu Mangal's plate. You know Madhu Mangal? Krishna's friend, you know, the big Brahmin, you know? Fat Brahmin guy, little Brahmin. And Krishna's friend, he's always with Krishna. So when they take prasada, sits beside Krishna, Krishna took the sweet, put it on Madhu Mangal's plate. Madhu Mangal took the sweet. I went, wow. <laughs> oh, so good. You know. So like this, this was, this is how Krishna would be enjoying teasing with the gopis. And similarly, when they're dancing. Srimati Radharani has two wonderful qualities over all others which are particularly pleasing to Lord Krishna. One was her cooking, very important, right? I think Singapore people don't like to cook, right? Everybody likes to go out. Nobody likes to cook. Everyone goes out. But Radharani, she doesn't go out. She stays home to cook, right? And another thing she does, she's also a very good dancer. Krishna likes to dance. You're going to dance, and Krishna dances a long time. You know, he, he doesn't get tired. <laughs> it, it said, sometimes Krishna will dance for the whole night of Brahma. You know how long a night of Brahma is? It's as long as the day of Brahma. One day of Brahma, Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Maharya Brahmano Vidu. One thousand Yugas taken together, one day of Brahma. One thousand cycle of the four Yugas. So the, the night of Brahma is of an equal duration. And Krishna would dance Rasa Lila with all the go for one night of of course, they dance in their spiritual bodies. 
we have to understand that their bodies are not material, spiritual bodies. When Lord Krishna calls the gopis to come, their bodies, their material bodies, they're still there in the home of their husband, laying on their bed to sleep. But they go in their spiritual bodies. They go in their spiritual bodies to take part in the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And this Rasa Lila is another of the wonderful pastimes which Krishna enjoys with his most intimate, the very best of his devotees. It is said even Lakshmi is not allowed to join in the Rasa Lila. Lord Shiva wanted to join. They said one time Lord Shiva also wanted to go to Rasa Lila. They said, you can't go, you have to be a gopi. So he took bath. He took bath in this kund and he came out in the form of a gopi. And he went to Rasa Lila. And Krishna said, who is this gopi? Which village are you from? <laughs> And then he found out, oh, this is oh, Lord Shiva. And he told Lord Shiva, you can't come to Rasa Lila. This is only for the gopis. But the, Lord Shiva was given the position Gopishwara. He was given the position of Lord of the gopis. And there's a Shiva Linga there in Vrindavan which they dress as a gopi. This Lord Shiva. And so he's worshipped in that particular for that particular Lila. So Lakshmi also, she wanted to go to Rasa Lila, and she went into Braja to do austerities. Usually Lakshmi's like this, right? Hands are open. She's giving blessings. I don't know, she didn't bless me. Did she bless any of you? <laughs> they, they say she's giving blessings, you know. But in Vrindavan, Lakshmi is like this. She's praying, bless me, bless me. What, what does she want? She wants to, to take part in Rasa Lila with Krishna. But she can't do it. Why not? Because she doesn't make a good cowherd girl. Cowherd ladies, you know, they pick up the cow dung and make cow dung patties. Could you imagine women from Singapore doing that? <laughs> Or women from Singapore, do you think you could ever make a cowherd girl? Not easy, yeah. And similarly, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, she can't become a gopi. She has a different rasa with Krishna, a different relationship. Anyway, uh, Srimati Radharani, along with the other gopis, they all dance with Krishna in the forest, they perform Rasa Lila. But sometimes when they're dancing together, sometimes uh, they become a little proud. And sometimes Krishna knows they're feeling, because when Krishna dances with them, Krishna expands himself to dance with each of the gopis. And each gopi's thinking, oh, Krishna's dancing with me, I'm special. Oh, I've got Krishna, he's dancing with me. So then Krishna will disappear. He sees that this, this gopis are becoming proud. He will disappear. But when he disappears, he will take one gopi with him. The other Look. There are the marks on his feet. You can see the different auspicious marking on the sole of the feet. The, 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 uh, the lotus flower, and the chakra, and the uh, instrument for controlling the elephant, and the thunderbolt. These markings, different auspicious markings, are all on the soles of the feet of Lord Krishna. So the gopis saw Krishna's footprints. But then they saw, oh, look. Someone is with Krishna. The gopis understood some other gopi had gone with Krishna and left them. And they thought, oh, who is this gopi? She must be very special to Krishna. Of course, this is Srimati Radharani. That she, Krishna takes special attention to her. 
And while they were going together, it is said that at one point, Srimati Radharani said to Krishna, I'm very tired. I can't walk anymore. You will have to carry me. So at that time, just as she was going to get on the shoulder of Lord Krishna, then Krishna disappeared. And Radharani was left on her own. So <laughs> in this way, Krishna is performing these different pastimes with the gopis and with Srimati Radharani. And then they look frantically, where is Krishna? Oh, I'm so foolish, I tried, I became proud, I wanted Krishna to carry me, and you know, then they lament their pride. So this is all something of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Krishna does not like to see his devotees to become proud. He likes that they should be humble servants. So, the mood of the gopis is to give pleasure to Krishna. They don't try to enjoy Krishna for themselves, but they take pleasure in giving others, giving Krishna to others. The highest pleasure is for the gopis to arrange for Radha to be with Krishna. But Srimati Radharani, she likes to, that the other gopis should be with Krishna. So none of them have that, that selfish mentality. They just simply like to be the servant, the servant of a servant of the servant, many times the servant. And there's so much pleasure in this, in being the servant, that this is why Lord Chaitanya comes. He comes in the mood of Srimati Radharani, to understand how much pleasure there is in being his servant. We would think, oh, I want to be God. I want to be like Krishna. I would like to be Bhagavan. But Krishna himself, he wants to be like Radha, like Srimati Radharani. And that is why Lord Chaitanya came. But it says, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nati Anya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but he comes in the mood of Radharani. And he teaches all of us how to surrender to Krishna and how to serve Krishna and how to experience the highest pleasure in serving Krishna. And it begins with chanting Hare Krishna. And it ends with chanting Hare Krishna also. There's nothing beyond that. So chanting Hare Krishna is itself the greatest service for Krishna. So we encourage all of you, chant the holy name, read the books about Krishna, worship Krishna, and in this way, make our life successful. So on this day, we're worshiping, we're especially praying, to Srimati Radharani, please be kind of me. Please, can you introduce me to Lord Krishna? Can you recommend me to Lord Krishna to be, give me a chance to become his devotee? Okay, are there any questions? Anything you'd like to ask? Yes, Guru? We have learned that when Lord Vishnu comes in Avatar, uh, Lord Krishna and Lakshmi, who was Lakshmi? Was it Subhadra or was it Radha? <laughs> okay, when, when the Lord comes as Vishnu, who is Lakshmi? Is she Subhadra or is she from Radharani? Yes, well, I was explaining a little bit about that. I was saying that Srimati Radharani, she is the root of everything. Everything comes from her, right? And she, ex and her ex she comes, she expands herself 
in many forms, many as many different gopis. She has her two very intimate friends. There is Lalita and Vishaka. Lalita and Vishaka, they are also gopis. And they are friends with Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is the leader of all the gopis. And there's Lalita, who is a little older than Radharani, and Vishaka, who is a very intimate friend of Radharani. They are all gopis. The goddess, and the, but it, while the gopis, these gopis are also goddesses of fortune, you see? But there's particular goddess of fortune who are the concerts of Lord Narayan, right? That's in the Vaikuntas. You get Lord Narayan and, and you get Lakshmi, goddesses of fortune there, in the Vaikuntas, not in Goloka. They reside in the Vaikuntha planets, which is different, different rasa, you see? So, the goddesses of fortune, they actually, they all originally come from Radharani. And Radharani, she is also per pers the personification of the Ladini Shakti. Yoga Maya, is the spiritual potency of the Lord, it's also eternal. And it, it's just like we said, Radharani is a Ladini Shakti, pleasure giving potency. So Yoga Maya is the Lord's spiritual potency. There is Yoga Maya and Maha Maya. We're under Maha Maya the material energy. But when we take the shelter of yoga maya, then we actually take the shelter of Lord Krishna's devotional service. Yoga maya is divine potency, spiritual potency. It is not punishing, but it is pleasing. And it's concerned with the activities of bhakti, devotion to Krishna. But Mahamaya is the different creation. So, Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, she's coming from the she's coming from Srimati Radharani. It's Srimati Radharani who is the original mula, the root of every of this whole creation. Any other questions anybody has? So if anybody asks you, who is this lady with Krishna? Now you can all know, you can tell, this is Radha, right? Radha Krishna. There are other temples, like if you go to Dwarka, you'll see there's Rukmini. Dwarkadish. Krishna in Dwarka is called Dwarkadish. And there he is with Rukmini, his wife, Rukmini. Srimati Radharani is the original form of Rukmini. She is also the, the root for Rukmini. Rukmini, the, Ruk, the, when the Lord comes as Dwarkadish, that is in Dwarka. Krishna's pastimes in Dwarka are perfect. But they're more perfect in Mathura. And they're most perfect in Vrindavan. So it's Vrindavan which is the supreme abode of Krishna. A little different. In Vrindavan, Krishna's enjoying as Gopi Jana Balava, the one who gives pleasure to all of the gopis.
other questions? There's a nice pastime takes place when, you know, Krishna was living in Vrindavan for some time, but at a certain point, Krishna had to leave Vrindavan because Kamsa arranged for a wrestling match and Lord Krishna and Balaram were brought out of Vrindavan to go to Mathura to take part in the wrestling match. So Krishna was then living, he spent some time staying in Mathura after that. After he killed Kamsa, he freed Vasudeva and Devaki from the prison house of Kamsa. And then Lord Krishna was living in Mathura. But the gopis were all left in Vrindavan. And they were greatly feeling the separation from Krishna. Because they loved Krishna so much. They didn't even like to see him. You know, when he went to the forest every day to go over the cows, they would lament and they would be anxious waiting for him to come home. It is said they even cursed Brahma, that Brahma, you're a hopeless creator because you gave us these eyes and our eyes are always blinking and we cannot see Krishna fully because our eyes are blinking. We're not able to always see Krishna. So you're hopeless, Brahma. You did a hopeless job in creation. If you were a good creator, we would be able to see Krishna all the time. But my eyes are flickering. I'm not able to see. So the gopis, they had so much attachment for Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna had gone off to Mathura, and the gopis were left there. So at one point, Krishna sent one of his friends, a relative named Uddhav. Uddhava came from Dwarka and he came to visit Krishna in Mathura. Now Uddhav, is a, he was a very dear friend of Krishna and he was also a relative. He was the, the son of one of, uh, well Krishna's father was Vasudev and Vasudev had a brother and his bro one of, he was one of the sons of the brothers of Vasudev. So he looked almost like Krishna. He had actually achieved Swarupya Siddhi. He had the same bodily features as Krishna. You know, very, very beautiful, all attractive. And he wore also Krishna's old clothes. He would wear Krishna's garments and Krishna's flower garland. And he had the long hair like Krishna, black hair, lotus eyes, long arms down to his knees. He just looked like Krishna. So Krishna asked him, I want you to go to Vrindavan and console my devotees there. Because they're worried about me, I haven't come home yet. They're waiting anxiously for news of me. So he said, I'll write a letter for them and I want you to take it and give it to the people of Vrindavan. So Uddhava was sent there to Vrindavan to deliver this message. So when Uddhava came there to Vrindavan, he first of all met with Nanda and Yashoda, and then, well, he, he got there to Vrindavan, it was in the evening, so he met first of all Nanda and Yashoda that evening. Then the next morning, when the sun rose, then the gopis saw this chariot had come into Vrindavan. The gopis were worried. They thought, oh no, a chariot. This, this is like the chariot which took away Krishna and Balaram. What, what's the chariot come for now? They've already taken Krishna and Balaram. Why have they come again with this chariot? But then they saw Uddhav. And they saw, they could immediately understand he must be a messenger of Lord Krishna because he looks just like Krishna himself. So the gopis were very anxious to hear from Uddha and Uddhava also wanted to read Krishna's message to them. But before he had a chance to read the message, they, they first of all had the a, a initial 
meeting between each other. And the gopis were somewhat suspicious of Uddhav. They didn't know that he'd actually come with a message for them from Krishna. And they thought, why has he come? What does he want? Maybe he's come to do us some more harm. Maybe he's not satisfied with all the pain which he's given us. Maybe he wants to give us more pain. So they were anxious to hear from Uddhava what he'd come, why he'd come to Vrindavan. And while they were talking with Uddhava, at this point a bumblebee began to fly around. And it was at this time that one of the gopis, in fact that gopi was actually Srimati Radharani, she began to address the bumblebee. And she began to talk to the bumblebee. That the, because the bumblebee was flying around and it was going even to her feet. And she, was, and she would address the bumblebee, don't come near me, I know who you are. You are coming from that Krishna and you are of the same nature as your master Krishna. Well, I know the nature of your master. Just like you, you go to the flower and you take the honey from one flower, then you leave it and you go to another flower. You're like that. You're ungrateful. Just like the, the students come to the teacher, they take the knowledge, they get the education, and then they go and they leave the teacher. We, I know all about you. I know what your master is like. You're of the same nature as your master. So don't come near me. Radharani was speaking to the bumblebee in this way, addressing him. You are the unreliable servant of an unreliable master. Krishna promised us he was going to come back. He's not come back. He allowed us to taste the nectar of his association and now he's gone and left us. He's cruel. He's done like that to us. We know all about this Krishna. We don't like to hear about him anymore. We know what his nature is like. Purnamasi also told us, Purnamasi is an elderly lady in Vrindavan, and she, she, the gopi said, Purnamasi told us everything about Krishna. In his previous life, he was a Kshatriya. And as a Kshatriya, he was called Lord Rama. And he was approached by the sister of Ravan, Surpanika. And as 